where the Gauteng Economic Development MEC Tasneem Mutara has dissolved two boards in the province, taking aim, first of all, at the Gambling Board and then the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency. I understand Gauteng Premier Panaz Panyazala Sufi has also applying his mind to the situation after a meeting between the two. Well, the MEC uh, joining me this afternoon to try and find out where we are on this. MEC Mutara, good afternoon. Thank you uh, for your time. I'm sure you would have seen the interview with Dr. Vilakazi and Advi Advocate Platt uh, accusing you of governance misconduct. What's your reaction? Um, yes, well, I was out of the country at the time, but I have seen the interview. Um, I think personally, um, of course, I take serious exception to such allegations. Um, and while the gambling board, I didn't necessarily dissolve. I had about six resignations, uh, which meant that um, the board was no longer properly constituted. Um, and therefore, um, the rest of the members could no longer, or the board was um, no longer legally constituted and could no longer, um, you know, exist. Um, but yes, to answer your question, I did see the interview. Uh, six board members resigning, uh, MEC. It's quite a lot of people to, to walk out while in disagreement with you. What exactly was their grievances uh, to see them all walk out? What were they telling you? What were their reasons? Um, so, unfortunately, none of them did give me any reasons. In fact, um, from inception, the board was a member short. Um, so the board leg legislatively has to have 12 members. Um, one member could not take up his position at the time and later on had a resignation before I arrived at the department. I was in the process of actually filling that vacancy. In my last meeting with the board, um, the meeting was very cordial. Uh, there were no issues. Um, in their resignation letters, they also, none of them gave reasons for resigning. Um, in fact, the day that I was taking the matter to the portfolio committee to fill in the vacancy, I could no longer because I had received um, the resignations. Uh, there have been uh, suggestions, been uh, forgive me, MEC, there have been suggestions uh, from the public that by dissolving two boards of very important organizations, Gauteng Gambling, the other uh, Gauteng Growth Development Agency, or GGDA, uh, that essentially there's no oversight. You can do what you want, and there's concerns around that. Do you agree or disagree? I disagree. Um, firstly, with the gambling board, um, the Act is quite clear on how to um, and how what happens in the instance of not having a board um so there's different responsibilities it's either resides with the mec or it resides with the executive council or it resides with the administrator we are holds rater in the gambling board the gtda however um we will place um an interim board in the meantime until we are able to appoint a new board. So the, legislat the legislation as it relates to the, gam the GGDA is not mm. as clear as the gambling board. Um, in fact, with the gambling board, it even, tell it even is quite clear in terms of um, parameters that the MEC or executive council or the administrator um, has responsibility over. Uh, I want to talk, I've got, uh, just for viewers, I'm sure MEC you'll understand, viewers might not know the exact context of the interviews that you and I are referring to. I'm going to ask my team to line those up for us. We'll just play them back. You have responded, but I just want to play them back just for our viewers. But we'll get to that in a moment, team. I'm sure we can get those sound bites ready. While I wait for those sound bites and my team to let me know they're ready, MEC, on GGDA, acting CEO, I understand, also uh, having been removed. There's a lot of people being removed from these boards. Talk to me about optics of this. Is there a concern here that, that anything is being uh, underhanded, especially when there's no oversight in place by anybody? Anyone that's there is being fired or walking out? Um, so the GGDA, I had a similar situation, although yes, we were um, at loggerheads um, since November. So I was appointed in October. We were at loggerheads with each other um, since October. I had intended to meet the GGTA about two weeks ago, um, and then um, instead of us having a meeting, um, I was informed that the chairperson had instructed um, the, um, the company to appoint lawyers to defend them against myself, um, which actually struck me as um, a bit strange because we had agreed to a meeting. Um, in fact, I also received four resignations from members of um, the GGDA board. 
at least with those of the four resignations that I received, um, three members were quite clear in their reasons for resigning. Um, they actually had issues with the chairperson um, and cited that um, there were a number of matters that they felt um, she had not been clear with the board, um, had left and withheld information from the board, in fact, um, and they could no longer serve in the board. Um, and the three members' resignations were quite, had quite similar content. The one resignation that I received had no reasons, um, but I'm made to believe that they did have quite a lot of differences amongst themselves within the board. Um, the four resignations actually also left the board um, defunct uh, because there also the legislation says that the board has to have a minimum of nine members. Um, with the four, reg four resignations, they were left with eight. On the acting group CEO, um, he was he is um, seconded from the department or was seconded from the department um, to act, and his acting stint um, came will come to an end at the end of April. Um, but there is a question just as to the the validity of his appointment in the department, and in order not to um, perpetuate any further irregularities, I then withdrew um, his acting appointment. But he had been acting for close to a year. Uh, so uh, what it sounds like, uh, MEC, is that uh, you've walked into a situation where now you're having to undo uh, a lot of a mess because the accusations is at this point that you're moving board members out to bring your own people in in order to move it in a certain direction. You're telling me it's quite the opposite. Is that a fair understanding of what you're telling me today? No, definitely. I think, like I say, with the GGDA, um, the resignations that I received um, laid claim to many instances where uh, board members, the individual board members were unhappy with the um, goings on of the board themselves. And of course, the contention between myself and particularly the, the former chair um, was not necessarily brought to the attention um, in a correct manner to the board members. And they felt and it, it was individually communicated like because they 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 their, their formal um, responses to me were very, very different, um, but laid bare quite a number of issues. Um, to me, even had they not resigned, I would have had to, um, you know, um, institute some sort of investigation into some of the allegations. I would have had to institute some sort of inquiry into just um, looking at um, how the board was operating. Can, can you give but me an example of the allegations, uh, MEC? Can you, you give me a, an example of allegations? Can you give me an, opportunity to uh, can you give me an example of allegations, MEC? Are we talking financial malfeasance? Are we talking fraud? What was the main concern that jumped out at you that uh, would have made you um, yes, uh, pay so attention? One of the... Um, um, one of the areas of concern um, that was uh, that was brought to my attention was that the board was not uh, properly furnished with um, information um, over a period of time. So um, the board was not able to make uh, proper decisions or apply themselves correctly. Um, they felt, or this particular board member felt, that the information was deliberately withheld from the board um, in an in an attempt to make it seem um, that I was unreasonable in some way or the other. Uh, when um, they brought the, initially when it was brought to my attention, I then sent all the information, previous, um, previous correspondence between myself and the board, um, which I usually would do through the chairperson. And um, my expectation is that the chairperson uh, would table the matter before the board. In my last correspondence with the board, I um, forwarded all the previous correspondence that I had forwarded to the board. And, and in that instance, it was the first time that uh, board members actually had received that information. Hmm. Um, and it was more of an issue of mistrust amongst themselves and a breakdown of relations even amongst themselves. I want to ask you, talk about a breakdown of trust, I want to bring in the name, uh, the former CEO, uh, Ms. Mosa um, Shabalala, in a case like this as well. Also, very, very messy situation. Uh, is there going to be a withdrawal or a settlement? Where are we on that? Um, I'm not sure. So, um, I, when I got to the department, um, the board had already had terminated her appointment. 
Um, she had taken it to CCMA, so it's with the CCMA. Um, we have sought legal counsel um, just to see how we have to proceed going forward. Mm. Ordinarily, of course, the GGDA would have to defend itself against a decision that it took. So we're just looking at the modalities of that. Uh, and MEC, I'm going to ask you to stay with me. My team telling us uh, we have got these sound bites uh, ready because I'm sure you'll recognize you've uh, had a chance to respond. I want to just bring viewers into what we are talking about. One, you're about to hear the first sound bite. MEC, I'm sure you'll, you'll stay with me. I appreciate the time. The ousted gambling board chair, Anthony Platt, saying the entity is in a shambles. That'll be the first sound bite. The second is Dr. Simon Gile uh, Vilakazi, former, uh, now former chair of Gauteng Growth Development Agency, or GGDA, alleging, MEC, that you are refusing to follow due processes. I'll get your response in a moment. Stay with me. I hope you can hear this. Let's play both those sound bites. So we were also in the process of appointing a, fi uh, an, a CEO. Um, and at that stage, we were in the last section of it doing final interviews when the MSC decided that she wanted to appoint an acting CEO, uh, which she has the right to do, but also these processes to follow. Why would you disband then or act in this way? Why would you insist on a CEO of your own choice? Because in my case, she had a name um, that in our very first meeting, before she could even understand what we were doing, what we were about, and the organization is really doing well compared to what we found as, a, as an organization. For instance, we found it uh, performing at 45 percent, um, and now we are at 80 percent. So we've changed a lot. The culture of the organization has changed. People are happy to be at work. And then you have an MEC that insists that she wants to destabilize all of that. The question is why? Because it's very ir irrational. Uh, MEC Motara, I'll leave this as a final question. Would you like to respond to that too? Uh, two things that stand out for me. One is, are you making a CEO of your choice appointment to be in your favor? Uh, and uh, what's the morale under your leadership? You're being accused of bringing morale down. I'll leave the last answer to you. Um, look, um, definitely not. I don't have any person in mind. Um, the former CEO, uh, chairperson sorry, of the GGDA has repeatedly said that I have. She must uh, make the person's name available um, because that's really not true. In, um, on, in terms of the GGDA, um, yes, they were concluding the process. I had no problem with that. The problem was that the former acting CEO had been acting for an irregularly long period of time, which I brought to the attention of the chairperson. Um, and when um, she insisted that we're about to conclude, yes, we're about to conclude, I actually received a formal complaint about a member of the board, as well as staff of the GGB, the gambling board, interfering with the process of um, a consultant, a um, a a recruitment agency that the board had appointed to assist them with the recruitment of a CEO. I sent that to the chairperson um, requesting for information. Um, she didn't respond um, continuously until I sent it to the member concerned. Um, the member concerned never got an opportunity, I guess, to respond because um, the board members resigned. Um, on the GGDA, same. I think um, it's disingenuous to say that I have somebody in mind. I really don't. Um, the process is open. I continuously asked, and they speak about due process, which is exactly what I was concerned about. Um, they sent me, um, GGDA sent me a submission with a lot of information missing. Um, scoring of the candidate, um, who else was shortlisted, who else was interviewed, um, the complete comprehensive report, which I asked for in numerous correspondences to them. Instead of responding, instead of providing me with the evidence, um, um, it was just back and forth saying, no, we've concluded, you must appoint this person. And if you don't appoint, if you don't want to appoint this person, give us reasons. And I said, um, look, I don't have a problem with the person. Um, they can reapply, we can restart the, we need to restart the process because the information that I'm asking you for is not mm. with forthcoming. And I'm not able to take this process forward because I have a lot of questions around the process myself. So my understanding is you're telling me on air today, MEC, that uh, Advocate Platt and Dr. Villacazi are lying. Um, well, I don't think, I guess that's their version of um, the truth. Of course, the truth is always subjective. Um, I think Advocate Platt would, be, um, would not be able to say, honestly, that I did not um, take the information of the, of the recruitment agency to her more than once and asked her more than once as to what is the response 
Um, there are staff said to be interfering in the process. There's a member of the board said to be interfering in the process. Um, she didn't respond, nor in writing, not um, through email or letter. Um, to this day, it has not been responded to. Um, why? I don't know. Um, the CEO, I think, um, sorry, the chairperson, I had said to her on numerous occasions, please provide me. This is the information that I need to complete the submissions that we can take it forward. It never came. All I was told was that the former MEC was aware of the process. And I said, well, that's fine. And I don't have, I'm not disputing that um, he was not aware or was aware. What I am looking for is um, formal written evidence um, to that effect. And MEC, and I appreciate as you. As well as additional information. Mm. I appreciate you coming on uh, to give us uh, your view on how this has all played out. Thank you, MEC. Uh, Tazni Motara, Gauteng Econo Economic Development, MEC, joining us uh, this afternoon here on ENCA. So lots of questions about what happens next, of course, for the board. We'll continue to track down that story, bring you the latest as best we can. We're heading up.